Welcome everyone to TNO, the last of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. McGulliver, and today we are continuing continuing on with the campaign, as you can see in the top left screen here, just because, well, we played as Kamchatka, but I figured, you know what, I asked you guys whether we should continue playing, and the overwhelming response was, heck yes. So, hopefully, my, my hope and goal <clears throat> is that the Divine Mandate of Siberia wins in the Far East and beats the Central Siberian Republic so that we can fight them and reclaim our home of Petropavlovsky Kamchatsky. So, right now that we're doing actually no focus right now, which is kind of weird actually. Uh, so, when I, I load, loaded this game back up from our previous save, um, we had Operation Venus. If you want to read about this, please go right ahead. It is what it is. But then, th the nine of these folks is all completed. So, the Rogue Tartars, we have the Final Warning, we also have a Demand Oaths of Loyalty. We had the Restored Tsar, who is no longer here. We had the Civil War Relived, as well as the Royal Relics. And the Synchronous Experiment with Be Bezniki. Cleaning up Kazembik's mess, as well as Out with the Tsar. Cool, but now we can do Visit to Gorky, or Welcome to Tank Divisions. We could punish the pirates, and get the factory back online. Which gives us bonuses to tanks and construction of them for about a year. Which is nice and all, but... Gorky's gone. So, I'm not sure what you want to do, but let's do just visit to Gorky. Maybe we can guarantee them or something, perhaps before the front marches to war again. We should extend an olive branch to per peace first and offer the tank warlords of Gorky peaceful reunification. Hopefully, the government commanding the city, its factories, and the tank armies will be acceptive of our socialist values and agree to cooperation for the greater good of Russia. Now that a true power in the region is rising, we will also make promises for vengeance against the Germans in the future when the nation is once again united and, of course, ready. And look at that bypass. And if you want to read about this, please go right ahead. And it auto bypasses as well. So, since we have that, establish the new frontier. E with even more warlord states falling in front of the might of our front once again, we must consolidate our gains. If we are too quick, we will not have learned our lesson from the West Russian War, and the bastion of socialism will collapse as quickly as it rose. Thus, the new lands brought under our protection must be stabilized, and civilian rule must be established soon. Time and effort will be devoted to this, and everyone must work together to achieve stability and development in the new sloths of land we've liberated. Once, once, only once that has been done, we will be able to continue our campaign of reunification. We'll add, oh, core states on all territory gained during Operation Venus. Nice. Hunt down rebel elements. You get more military factories. Uh, equipment improve. Yes, please. Our expansion continues with glorious success. And as our territory grows, so does our access to the industry and resources of West Russia. We can utilize this newly found power in many ways, and one of them is in the production of vehicles in our factories. Vehicles, whether they are armor, personnel carriers, or more trucks, have many uses in both the military and civilian sector, especially if we produce more modern and advanced models. Transportation. Oh boy, look, they're killing each other now. Nice. Uh... Transportation of people and useful goods across the territories we control will be easier, especially as we repair and develop the infrastructure destroyed by the German bombings. It will also help us better project our power further south in the areas we've just conquered and are still in a period of transition. Not bad. So these guys are killing each other. That's okay with us. We could buy some equipment, but I don't I don't usually do that anymore. I don't do that either. I don't really do that either. So, we're all here by ourselves watching these guys kill each other off. Now, overall, who's stronger? They have, they have a lot of resistance. They have no manpower. These guys have no manpower. Fewer factories. These up to 12 divisions. Up to 10. Honestly, I'd rather kill off Samara, because they can be really, really just a pain in the butt to kill off. But, because we came from Kamchatka, we've got a few f ships here, which is actually really cool. Look at that. We didn't have all the ships uh, survive coming over here, but we had the vast majority of them. We lost, like, two ships. So probably, like, two subs or two destroyers. They didn't make it. All right. That's not bad. Not bad whatsoever. they will be led by Nikolai Kuznetsov. A sea wolf. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Too bad there's not really too much naval action going on here, but that's okay. And you're all trained, huh? Uh, combine everyone together. That's good. Ivan Yumashev. Uh, Admiral Yumashev. What a guy. Lancer. Uh, destroyer. We do have destroyers, so why not? Hunter killer. Loading drill. I'll go that one. Cool. And did you have any upgrades, Nikolai? No. Okay, cool. Let's the time go on. Watch them kill each other off. And get some support weapons 3. Uh, what do we have here? 1965 stuff. Let's grab some more construction. Oh my goodness. The, the AI... I did, I'm, we're picking literally off where we left off in the last video, but... The AI has not done any sort of industry. That's such a mistake. Oh my goodness. But let's go ahead and do, be, do some Hunt Down Rebels elements. 
or rebellious elements. We've taken full control of many new territories in West Russia, but resistance continues. As such, we've tried to normalize the situation there and discredit the regimes that used to rule the land. Some still fight on and resist Arkhangelsk authority. Such rebellions must be put down, especially when they could pre present a possible threat to our supply lines when we move southwards. For that reason, counterinsurgency operations must be happening all the time. If we don't stop fighting the rebels and the partisans, then we'll have not given them any more space and freedom to operate. And eventually, the resistance will stop, but they are demoralized and depleted of many supplies. Even those radical resistance groups will have to surrender. Hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, oh, we can do this against Varkuta, eh? Hmm. We might just take that up, offer up. And we do have the naval infantry here that we were using last time. Uh, let's see. Marines. How much art artillery do we have? What is our supplies like, actually? Not good. Oh, we'll throw another marine battalion. That's fine for us. Never mind, we don't have any marines. Okay, then. Hmm. Artie? Well, we don't have any extra Artie, but that's okay. Might as well try to raid him, right? We love the loot. Military factories. Looking not too bad. We definitely need some more anti-tank. Get some more of that, too. Guns looking fine. Don't really want to lower that. Get some more of this. Get some more of that. Tanks is going to take a while to get. Let's do that, though. Cool. And then relook at the government. When the WRRF collapsed altogether with its efforts to defeat the Reich, Marshal Voroshilov and those who still had faith in him and the regime were forced to flee to the far north, specifically to the freezing city of city of Arkhangelsk, right on the coast of the White Sea. However, now that more of our old lands have been brought back under our control, there are much more attractive options for the front's capital and base of operations. Specifically, the two main options considered are Siktivkar, a major city a bit further south, and Rykov, a formerly, formerly known as Vyatka and the center of the Russian royal restorationists. Both have been secured by the Red Army and are much more easily connected to the rest of West Russia and the fronts we fight on, additionally. With both of them being previous capitals of warlord states, some infrastructure for governing a nation from there will definitely exist. Therefore, relocating the government is attempting offer to support our campaign of reunification and help the front in general. Scam for loot and beat the crap out of them. A partisan stronghold. Victor looked at the side of the battle. As members of the Marshal's staff, he was tasked with gathering data from the engagement with the monarchists and revision as partisans of the countryside. The very notion of resistance surprised him. Weren't the Union beloved a symbol of defiance against the, Ger the Germans? Why would the people turn on them now and support the reactionaries and the traitors? He shook his head. Maybe he would never understand. He, he stood, his, his foot ankle deep in the mud. The rains had made the ground wet, and if he were not careful, he would sink. He looked at the truck that brought him here. Its wheels dug into the mud, and no motion of the engines could unclasp nature's grasp. Before him stood the remains of the compound the partisans used as a hiding place for the insurgent acts, an old sediment from the Soviet times abandoned during the bombings. He could see the shattered facades of buildings on the streets, and shards of brick and wood crunch underneath his foot as he walked by. Weapons, dead bodies, a front had been long since cleaned after its own dead. For these people, however, there was no such luck. Their emperor gods, ideology, it did not matter. They had abandoned them, left them for dead. He set out his notes and camera. The tools of his trade. It was time to get to work. Gruesome work, but necessary all the same. Very nice. All right, so I love, I love Vyatka. I love Vorkuta. I love beating the crap out of our enemies. And Operation Luna. Oh, oh hold on. Ultimate. Ah, uh, Onega. You know what? Uh, our guys are already in transition, so you can go suck a fat one, Onega. Operation Lunda. With the completion of Operation Venus, we have defeated even more enemies in West Russia and are likely to contenders to once again be the ones to unite this fractured region. However, we still have a formidable opponents that uh, <clears throat> to deal with before we can safely say that we've become the masters of West Russia like last time. Should we defeat them, perhaps we can claim that role once more. There are three groups that stand in a way. The first is Bashkiria, a nationalist Islamic republic that, with little ambitions other than to survive, will be easy targets. A more unique warlord exists in Perm, where a small and sane cult has been deemed the Russian Aryans and want to collaborate with the Germans. However, our biggest enemy in the region is one and one of the most hated groups is Samara than the Russian Liberation Army. Ruled by General Vlasov, they betray their country and are friend to the Germans. Of course, they will be crushed with all of our might. Alright, we're looking pretty good. We're not going to back down, you son of a gun, and the partisans on trial. Four men march slowly in forward in the woods, their feet and hands linked by chains. The blights uh, cling to the temple of their steps. Behind them was Victor and a squad of local front soldiers tasked with guarding this lot. These men were partisans of various groups, and their uniforms were patches that declared their allegiance to the VTNS, Komi Republic's assortment of paramilitaries, and others still. It didn't matter whom, to whom they belonged. In Victor's mind, they were all traitors, fascists, and revisionists. On a clearing up ahead was a court held for this occasion. The judge, a captain of the front, dressed in uniform, sat on a metal, metal chair. The front's military law book lay on a table before him. Around him, gathered in a cluster, were his appendages. Court notaries, stenographers, and a jury made out of random farmers and scavengers the front had accosted to serve jury duty. 
in the Civil Court, those partisans might have stood a chance. Once it was in the military's hands, however, no matter how formal the front had arranged a trial to be, the verdict was, verdict was sealed. Victor felt pity for these men, even as he volunteered himself to stand witness and testify against them. They were kindred countrymen, misguided, maybe? Guilty, almost definitely. They couldn't have known, however, that they were on the wrong side of history, even as the blights or bites clinked and the leaves underfoot crunched under the steady stream of steps he felt pity. Thus the trial proceeded. Witnesses took the stand. The defendants defended themselves to no avail, though. The gavel struck and the judge pronounced their guilt. Victor awaits with bated breath for the sentence to be read. The hollow, empty forest rustled as a pregnant silence reigned in the court. Death? Or dishonor? Hard labor? Oh, what are we? We're authoritarian socialists. We're not libertarian socialists. I kind of want to do hard labor because I like the stability. I don't want to lose manpower. Uh, we're going to go death. I'm sorry, we just gotta go with death. We lose manpower, but moving the capital. Just because I want that political power. With the defeat of the Tsardom of Yak and the Republic of Komi, a question arises among the ranks of the front. The front's current capital, located in Arkhangos, is hardly the most hospitable place. Cold weather, rough terrain, and distance from other urban centers on the West Russia rendered it almost obsolete. The High Command now considers moving, but to where? Fortunately, with the defeat of our adversaries in the region, we have a few candidates in, candidates in mind. The first one is the city of Siktivkar. The former capital of the front during the West Russian War move here will have deep symbolic value. Beneath it also lay the former Republic of Komi supply of chemical weapons. Ooh, I love chemical weapons. Useful to deter any intruders from entering it. However, the city has a long tradition of paramilitarism, and it might be best to not jeopardize the nurse center of a government. Further south is Rykov, or the Tsarist terminology, Vyatka. It's a more central location, located near the Siberian railways and the Izhevsk manufacturing plant. The infrastructure of the area would mean that the supplies would get to our soldiers quicker. The location is an issue, however. If the Germans came knocking, they would have to go... They wouldn't have to go far to knock the front's government down. Lastly, there is the old, reliable Arkhangelsk. Located far away from any urban center or area of the front, its position has become untenable with the availability of more suitable candidates. However, its isolation or rough terrain that surrounded would serve to slow down any enemy that intends, that intends to defeat the front. The choices of the marshals, where should we go? Uh, move the capital. I like more political power. So, I don't like Arkhangelsk because even though it is tough there to take out, you know, if the Germans, let's say, invaded... It'd be very hard for them to take it by land. But what if they had, you know, like... A, they have a big Kriegsmarine, so they could probably navally invade over here. So I don't like that. Siktivkar is not bad. Um, is it over here? Uh, where, wait, where's Siktivkar? Komi? It's probably Mikun? No. Did these guys... No, it's Aryan Brotherhood. Komi? Ah. So if I move it to... We don't get to keep it. So we're probably just going to... Uh, Rikov? They also took over Vyaka, so it doesn't even matter. So I'm going to go with... What's the weather like down here? It's muddy and sabotage resources. That's a good. That sucks. And uh, Siktiv car is foresty and sabotage resources. Well, I kind of want to do Siktiv car. So now our Congress is the capital. <laughs> uh, as if we had a choice. Yeah, those are my black market payments. Those are literally from the, uh, the game or the AI when they're still doing it. Which I think is still a little bit bug, but whatever. Oh, gosh, why did you have to get encircled? But Operation Lunda, with the mad, maddened cultists, I want to do the traitor general first. Few men have become as hated in free Russia as General Vlasov. The man from the Soviet Union once thought to be a loyal officer would turn against him, and merely mentioning him can spark anger in the minds of the Russians. He is a traitor and proved his, this by founding a small fiefdom in the fringes borders of the Reich's eastern territories. At the same time, his army, the ROA, has also become a loathed group. There are few things more shameful to our people as collaborating with the Nazi invaders, and each and every one of member of Vlasov's army should be ashamed as well. We must invade their warlord state in Samara, one of the few remaining pockets of resistance to socialist authority in Western Russia. And so mobilization near their stronghold must begin. An army of defectors will have no chance against a massive, massive Red Army. And we'll go with... What are we not improving? Academic base. Poverty rate needs to go up a little bit more. 6, 4, 8.25. Man, the AI... I don't know what the AI even tries to do at this point. Like, why are they doing that? But if that's 2.25, I guess we'll do workers. Why not? Workers is pretty weak. One pretty weak sauce in my opinion. But that's maybe just me... Don't train if you need to. Um, we definitely need more resources and stuff. Black market equipment arrives at this point. Nine divisions isn't great, but I don't want to use these guys. Anti fascista Kaya Narodnaya Brigada Arkhangelsk. That's nice. No, wasn't this? I think it was this stuff I was going to use. Cool. If you want to read about the Muslim separatists, please go right ahead with what must be done, as well as hammer out a deal. Cool. By the Trader General, because I really don't want to fight them. I really, really don't. Five to nine. Uh, and these guys do have motorized, so taking these guys out will be slightly easier because they won't be able to move nearly as quickly. So, after that, drop the hammer. 
The time for our final vengeance has come. Vlasov's collaborationist army might have betrayed their very own motherland and our regime, but justice must eventually be served. The Red Army is fully prepared to strike and defeat any resistance, as it has managed to do so many times throughout a campaign of reunification. Unless they get help from their massive benefactors, the Reich that wants to see us dead at all costs, destroying Samara will be a relatively easy and simple job, and once they're wiped out the face of the earth, we'll make sure that such a vile organization to threaten the WRRF never happens again and improve academic base. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. That is something to be celebrated, my friends. Absolutely to be celebrated. And what about this? Never again. We need to own Samara. Uh, we did it. Uh, actually, I'll read that after we did this one. Uh, if we can move fast enough, we can probably take all their territory realistically. And get the cores so we can start coring that. Because even though, I mean, I don't think these guys have enough. Oh, do these guys have enough? They have so much resistance here. Wowzers. But, uh, we'll read this one next. The Maddened Cultists. None of the warlord states to arise from the chaos of the Russian anarchy were as insane and distanced from the thoughts and beliefs of the people they govern as Perm, commonly known as the Aryan Brotherhood. While after the war, all Russians hated the Nazis one way or another, and some went off the deep end. Some, led by Guthrum Wagner, have established themselves as their own warlord state, believing in Nazi ideology, yet also arguing that Slavs are Aryans as well. They rule Perm with a reign of terror that its people have, have to go through. It is high time we liberated them, and so an invasion will be launched as part of Operation Luna. Ooh, hopefully we can go get do this quickly enough. Cool. Ah, oh, if you want to read about the factory, please go right ahead. Because happens every campaign, pretty much. The power of the modern warfare unleashed. Bear, bear, nas. Bear, bear, nas. Move in, move in, move in, move in, move in, move. Oh, Indonesian war. It's still 65. That's not too bad. Uh, where are the trucks? I want you guys to get down to as fast as possible. If you could do that, that'd actually be extremely good. Go, go, go. Just don't get encircled, please. Love of God, do not get encircled. Once we break over the river, we should be able to zoom, 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 zoom pretty quickly. And what can we do? Scavenge for loot? Yes, please. Oh, we're over. Oh, look at that. Now we got speed. I'll go here to there. Just do it like that. There you go. Something like that. Uh, is this division trapped? It is. Well, it was. It's dead now. It's very nice. Very nice. All right. Well, we've done 21% of the way. Oh, we got Kubia Chef. Nice. Ah, Kazan. Oh, look at that. Oh, boy. We got it, my friends. We have got it. Uh, Nova Polska still exists. Well, look at that. Actually, leave this part open because I don't want to deal with that resistance. So, we'll just do something like this. The goal is to take you from the south. Um, I'm going to have... Oh, we're going to cross the river regardless. So, we'll come here maybe and go to Permheim. Cool. And the Madden Cultists. And let's go and core everything we can. Thank you. Prepare raid. Never again. We did it. We've managed to defeat the collaborationists on the battlefield and destroyed any organized resistance they have to offer. What we must do next is to ensure that these those behind the ROA are held accountable for the crimes and that no one ever gets the idea to revive the treasonous groups. Many more many were involved in occupied high positions in the Russian Liberation Army. And they all need to be trialed. We can arrest every single one of them that we can find and hold them on trial. They have committed a crime merely by helping the ROA and believe in, believing in cooperation with Germany. We will deal with them, and while some may be simply imprisoned, we will not hesitate to execute those that were the worst and most evil. Every much measure must be taken to ensure no group ever again appears within the WRRF. Good. Oh, they're gonna go to war with us, huh? Are they gonna say yes? No? Maybe so? Yes! I love it! Poor Nova Polska. I was looking over here. I think Borman won, right? Uh, someday you will get a focus tree, hopefully. Oh! They go to war with us. Well, then why they just pay the tribute, then? Eh, whatever. Some are more German than others. Amen. Right? Now, I left this area open, which is not great, but whatever. Um, oh, look at this. Equipment, yes, please. I want you guys to go no, go here and just encircle them. It's going to suck a little bit. Uh, you guys will go straight for it, Permheim. You go right there. Actually, if you go right there, that'd be really actually better. I kind of doubt you'll get there in time, but you never know. Hey, there you go. Good job, guys. Wow, those divisions looking really weak. 
Well, what else? You? Never again, my friends. Never again. Euthanize the abomination. The time is going to put an end to the madness of Wagner's clique and their insane beliefs. Our armies have already massed on the frontier with Perman and are ready to invade at a moment's notice. Seeing as we are opposed to any form of fascism and national daddyism, we can never tolerate the existence of what is effectively the biggest admirers of the Reich. The battle for Perm shall be easy, merely a footnote in the WRRF's victorious history, and will open the road for further expansion. Let us hope the Aryan Brotherhood and its ideology will, never, will be forever buried in history, never to be seen again. How dare you join the not National Socialists, you bunch of scumbags. But the Day of Judgment, my friends. Day of Judgmento. Ivan sat on the floor, his ears pressing against a wall made of cor cor corrugated metal sheets. He and his companions had hastily made this compound as a base of operation against the communists. The last revolutionary front found where they, were, where they had hit him. He was a member of the Liberation Army, recruited when the ROA liberated his village. A boy of around 19 years old, Ivan did not have anywhere else to go. No relatives with a senile mother and dead father. He joined the ROA to make a living for himself. The sounds of battle were getting closer. The wall wasn't much impediment to the crack of rifle fire and blast from mortar shells and grenades. It would be his first engagement and most likely his last. Yet, a kind of serenity passed through him. His breathing was steady, and his heart did not give way to fear or excitement. He was calm. Death was coming, and he was, he was ready. His life, what little there was, flashed before him. A childhood sweetheart, whose name he had long forgotten. His mother, who he had left behind. The tree where him and his, plays, his pals had played under. Above it all was a gentle, gentle whistling, shriller and shriller by the second. He found himself flung away from his seat. He tried to get up, falling, falling again and again. He could not feel his legs when he raised his hands to look at them. He found the left one of a bloody ashen stump. Oh, Ivan resigned himself to his fate and his ears rang. His mind's praying for peace to finally come home to Russia. Dolce et decorum est pro patria mori. Bro, that sucks. Man, having your legs blown off. I can't. Mm. Oh, boy. That's just not nice. Oh, boy. Ah, we captured a plant. If you like to read about that, please go right ahead. But they have only five divisions. Look at that. This is probably one of the easiest times I've ever played in West Russia. Even though we began in the very far east. No, come on, cheater. Oh, come on. Let the Divine Mandate win. I want revenge. Those Marines did not sacrifice their lives so that we didn't have to do this. Okay, that was really ridiculously easy. I'll be honest, man. Then again, seeing a massive Aryan Brotherhood like that is very strange. There we go. And we did it. Euthanize the abominations. Oh, we got it done. Persecute or rescue the persecuted. Under the rule of the Aryan Brotherhood in the city of Perm, there was nothing but pointless oppression against the people. Compression that the West Russian Revolutionary Front has come to end. The citizens that once had to live under the cultists must be taught the socialist doctrine, a doctrine of equality. Normal civilians will be integrated into the front as well, especially since they will not have to live in a city that is constantly on war footing and will enjoy a better life overall. Those deemed untermensch will be freed once again, no longer adhering to absurd racial theories. Perm will be free and under our benevolent rule. Great. Uh, at this point, I want to get more tanks. We need more tanks and APCs. I, I, we're Zukov. If we're not using tanks, what are we doing? We're doing it wrong. Now, I want to finish the focus. If you want to be... You want to read about the Sictic card. Arsenal, please go right ahead. The Khan rises, huh? Locked and loaded. Very nice. Cool. Um, wow, look at all this. I want to raid, raid, raid their booties. So, we're going to finish the tree here first and then do what we can. Restore the West Russian Revolutionary Front. Well, technically, we already are that, but whatever. Secure the new territories. If we want to maintain the position from which we fell so easily years ago, we must learn our lessons and establish ourselves as a dominant power fully in control of the conquered territories. The first step to stabilizing our control is ending what resistance remains. While we have theoretically seized a lot of land, there are still many resistance groups as well as bandits and warlords roaming it, and our army must be effectively deal with them. Next, the ec economics of all these regions must be assimilated in the WRF, which could prove difficult due to the differing economic systems adopted in each, but is ultimately uh, responsible and helpful for our efforts. Finally, the governance of these lands must be made more effective, and that can be done in many ways. In total, this will be a hard yet not infeasible process. Good. Cool. Can't do anything there. Look, National Socialism, but freeing the camps. So old man, Anton said to a newly freed prisoner, how are you feeling on this day? The only the man only nodded. A vague gesture of positivity was all that Anton needed to know. They sat in front of a munitions factory. The man's former workplace, well, workplace would mean that the Brotherhood employed him instead. He was their slave. On his back, between his shoulders, blades, was a black mark in the shape of a swastika. It's fine if you don't want to talk to me, Anton said. I understand you've seen things other folks have not. And the man's eyes were a particular kind of hollowness. Disbelief reigned in the void where emotion should have been. Disbelief uh, having have another one of these. And don't eat too quickly, Anton broke off a piece of the bread he held in his hands and gave it to the man. While the latter ate ravenously, Anton observed. The man's teeth had gaps, and in places some of it hung precariously from the gums. What's your name? Anton asked, out of a whim. Alexei, the man said, proceeding to devour his food. He did not pay any heed to Anton before he finished. I, Alexei started his words, halted at the precipice of the, their tongue. He seemed to consider his words, thank you. He then caught Anton in a embrace and began to sob. It's all right, Anton said. It's all right. Nothing in the world could edit a race what the man has gone through. It was the least Anton could say and do. Scars upon the Russian psyche. Oh, boy. 
But, let's see, reach out to the ROA, da, 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 land action, oop, yes, reward the people. As the front secures its true position in the world, the people of West Russia are full of joy, celebrating and supporting us in every step of the way there. However, they've also had to endure difficult situations. As we drained, as we drained our available resources and employed every method to trickle, trick up our sleeves to get to where we are at. It is time to show them that they have not been forgotten and that they are the true backbone behind our success and power. We have gained amounts of lands and resources unimaginable when we have been isolated to the far north. As per the most basic principles of socialism, we must distribute them to each according to their needs. The peasants and workers will receive land they can cultivate and use in the form of collective farms, while we also offer aid from the profit we have made with our conquests and resources. The proud citizens of our country will see what they can earn in return for the loyalty and hard work. They will go to get more pensions, but for even better po uh, monthly poverty. Even though that's a high cost, if you'd like to about better industrial equipment, please go right ahead, which is very, very bueno for us. Incredibly bueno. Which I don't think they often say in Russia, but I could be wrong. We still can't build Jack Squat. My goodness, that sucks. And then compile our findings. In our long and difficult campaign of reunification, we've also we've had to fight many wars and battles against those that refuse to cooperate and bow down to our Congos. Not only has this rewarded us with territory and glory, but also well, what otherwise not we, but also with important military lessons which we have not otherwise not have learned. The Red Army has fought its way through West Russia using different doctrines and strategies in each battle, and so we must closely examine together with WRRF's best generals which tactics are the most effective ones in the battlefield and which could be improved for the future campaigns that could prove even harder than ever before. Mm, we could probably raid them. We could try it. We need a little bit more political power. We only get point for every day, but we did core everything. So look at that map. Our 450,000. My goodness, I'm feeling pretty good. Well, we yeah, got more military factories. My goodness. Very nice. Very, very good. Uh, get some more of that then. Guns will be extremely important. Artillery is going to be extremely important as well for everything that we need. Now, y'all better listen up. And y'all best die now. They refuse tribute. We should do relatively okay here. I mean, they're not full strength, but we're out the our way. Of all the groups that we posed and fought the most, the worst was the Russian Liberation Army. That was not only due to their insane methods to destroy us, namely joining the Germans, but also because of their size and widespread support. Many who despise us and socialism in general saw the ROA as the best option, which further increased its popularity. Now, however, we have the power and the control of all of, West of West Russia, not Siberia. A widespread purge of any and all members, friends, and sympathizers of Lasov's armies of the utmost necessity. If we want to eliminate them once and for all, the most hated organization in our lands must be crushed and forgotten forever. In which we lose a lot of war support, we get more stability, and I have some coffee here that I didn't drink yet. Oh boy. Oh, yeah. and actually, doing this raid is actually really good for us, just because we should just be able to literally just push them out and push them over. When you fight them, so, uh, you don't have the most attack. I want, oh, we'll save you for the tanks. Oh, wait, yeah, you are the tanks. There you go. Nice. Very good, my friends. Treasure, a relic of the past. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. And the revolt has been crushed. All right, then. I don't really care about Ireland right now, but whatever. So you play them, though. Get some of that, that'd be good. Get more output, please. Root out the ROA and establish our administration. Now that the West Russian Revolutionary Front has finally reunited the region and once control, we must also ensure that the government leading it is stable and effective. The first key part in doing that will be shifting from military to civilian administration in the newly reclaimed lands. Currently, much of the affairs of those regions are handled by the occupation forces there, but this needs to change. Loyal communists will be placed in positions of local government there to form proper civilian authority and complete their transition into the integral parts of the WRF. Additionally, the government must also be centralized and reformed to be able to deal with a much larger expanse of land, specifically by bringing in local representatives from elsewhere and establishing new administrative divisions so that the front can finally stabilize its rule and prepare for more ambitious endeavors. Which get a lot more political power, which is awesome, awesome, awesome in Operation Phobos. To the west of the WRRF, on the estuary of the Onega River and on the coast of the White Sea, the volunteer anti-communist guard has established itself as yet another warlord state. However, it is not like the others. Vladimir Karpichnikov was not a man who seized an opportunity for personal glory and profit, but a general force into that position by Helsinki. After the Great Patriotic War, Finland has acquired vast lands and Karelia and Kola Peninsula compl completing their dream of a greater Finland, but when a socialist power arrived in their backyard, they would find a way to shield themselves from, by, from them by the creation of a buffer state, now with their power and lands reclaimed. We can defeat the final warlord still, still holding out West Russia. Onega. Of course, Finland will rush to their protection, but we will hit two birds with one stone. Onega will fall, and the opportunity to reclaim Karelia will present itself. Cool. And all but you will become this. Because soon, Division Template 8 is what we want, and we're going to need a little bit more Aughty on there. Actually, I'm, I, I might just go and force these guys to do this already. That's 40 combo. we got extra anti-tank, which I don't really care about. I'm going to remove that. Anti-tank is nice and all, but whatever. 
40 combat width, 2 artillery, 4 artillery, not bad. And all but you, because we'll make the marines even 40 combat width too, so. There you go. There is no coming back from that. Uh, actually, did I get rid of... No, it's these guys that we want to use for military police. Um, no military police, that's fine. Yeah, goodbye. I don't care if we don't have enough guns yet. Art actually, artillery is looking really good for that. End of the South African War, very nice. Uh, no, artillery is looking, looking pretty bad. Okay, we need more arty then. Mm, do that first. There you go. You have plenty of APCs for that for now. Get more arty, 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 arty. Artichoke, arty, arty, arties. And we'll make these guys tank divisions. Actually, how many tanks do we have in reserve right now? We don't have enough army XP. God darn it. And we'll do agricultural methods. Cool. The front restored. Get ready, boys and girls. We're going to have to go soon, soon, soon. Oh, we can do another raid. Um, do we get a war goal on them or anything? Or Maybe we have to wait for them to respond to that stuff. Okay. The front restored. A long time ago, the West Russian Revolutionary Front fell, but not all of it. We stumbled, we fell, and we struggled to survive, but we rose from our ashes, and through invasion after invasion, we've climbed back up to the top. We have done it. Uh... West Russia is no longer divided between petty warlords, but united under one banner, and that of the front. The Red Armies reign supreme, and the workers not only not only of Russia, but of the world as a whole rejoice with their second rise of power now. We might finally be recognized as the rightful rulers of the region once more, and we will send a strong message to our enemies, both the rest of the Russian warlord states to the east, as well as the German Reich that finally might realize our full might, which is very good. Alright, so this is very weird. They're not going so oh wait hold on oh it's probably under this one reunification no it's under here too well we do have a loot uh, if that's the case uh i don't want to do this but i think we're gonna have to oh nega seems to be kind of a bugged thing so i hate doing that but it's just it's just got to be done and make sure we do we still have our planes here yes and no extra spare planes but it's okay Actually, if anything, maybe we could even use you guys. Convoy raiding all around here, maybe yes, yes. Alright, those guys are gone, that's good. We don't have nearly as many divisions as I would love to have, but that's okay. Go, go, go. Get to Kemi, very nice, very nice. Can you cut these guys off and go to Olu, and then Vas Vasa? And then Turku, and Tampera, and Helsinki, go around them. And Vipuri. Hey, maybe. You might get in circle and destroy, but whatever. It is what it is. Man. Okay. Integrate. Good. And scavenge for loot. And we can do this one more time. Yep. Oh, well, we lost that division. God dang it. Alright. We're going to go all the way in then. I kind of figured that would happen, though. Oh, well. It is what it is. There you go. We're going to need that. Hopefully we still get that event to piece them out, because that never... Nothing happened with that, so... Hopefully it works, maybe? We've lost 11,000, they lost 9,000. It's not nearly enough. Go in, come on. Help them out, kill them all off. They don't deserve peace. They just kill off an entire motorized division, so... They have up to 10 divisions, so we definitely have more than them. Kill every single last thing you have to find. Because if not, hey, if I could have puppet them, that's kind of fine with me, but... Yeah, I wasn't going to wait like an extra week for this, so... It is what it is. So we've lost 16,000 versus 15,000. Now they're taking even more casualties, which is nice, nice, nice. Hey, both of you here. Circle that division if you can. Good. God dang it, they, we didn't get to encircle them. That's alright, though. Alright, and equipment. Yeah, that's very weird. They, just, they didn't do anything for us. Well, that sucks. Do not let them through. Come on, guys. Do not let them go. Oh, 
Come on, you stupid fins. You will die here. Come on, fins, give it up. You're you're gonna lose so hard here. Yeah, I'm just gonna full annex them. Kill them off, kill them off, kill them off. Oh, oh, come on, come on! That was so close, so close. You've already lost Helsinki. Give it up, for the love of God, just give it up. You've lost 45,000 soldiers. You're not gonna be able to replace those men. Die, you piece of garbage. You pieces of garbage, die now. Die, 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 die. Oh, my coffee. Yeah, die. <laughs> Hmm. Smoke a latte. Very nice. And you know what? I don't care. If we lose another division, so be it. I want every single one of these guys dead. Uh, we're gonna need more orders here, too. Come on, if you can get down here and fast enough. Oh, you got supplies back. These guys didn't, though. Sucks, whatever. We've lost... A single, a single division. That's fine. This is really dumb. Yeah, this seems a little bugged. This definitely seems a little bit bugged. I want you to help kill them off. Kill every single last fin you find. Okay, seriously. How have they not given up yet? How have they not given up? Turku. Go back to Turku. God dang it, they killed another division. Come on, kill them off. They're just fins, for the love of God. You're 40 combo with infantry. And you can't beat the stupid fins up? Man, the army we have is just garbage. Straight garbage. Get your butts out. Let's get going. Stop wasting time. Let's go, 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 go. Do we actually sink some fin? Yeah, we just sent some convoy. That's nice. Why are you... What are you guys doing? Find them. Kill them. How much manpower do they have? They should have literally no manpower now. bad. God, letting the AI take control early on is such a mistake. Such a huge mistake. My goodness. Oh my gosh, we have to take over all of Finland. That's so dumb. Because the game is bugged or something. I don't really know. Please don't lose Turku. For the love of God, please do not lose Turku. Uh, you're moving in there. Go back to Helsinki. You should be able to capitulate once you get Helsinki. Come on, get to Helsinki. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Move those chubby little legs. I love to scavenge for, scavenge for more loot, but whatever. All right, we. Is that it? Seriously? Is that seriously it? That's so stupid. We lost one or two divisions, and that's all we get. Hell no, man. I hope they update that later on. Because I want more. I want more blood from them. They don't deserve life after all that stuff. Holy crud. Uh, let's throw on some more of that there. Because we can put you guys back there. That would be good. Let's organize this a little bit better. That's better. 37. Boom. Boom. We're almost ready to make some better tanks. Almost. Screw those guys. Integrate those guys. And... Wait. Oh, it'd be the regional stitch. Okay, here we go. Reunification. Great. There we go. And the front restored. Cool. Definitely gonna need some more army XP. Oh, boy. Thanks so much. Uh, gotten rid of. When do we need to do that? After 69. So we got quite a while for that one. Many political matters have to be reformed. Okay, so here we go. We gotta spend a lot of this stuff. So do that one. Poverty relief as well. Equipment's super important. I'm gonna grab this one. I like the slower decreasing time. I like infrastructure though. Get agriculture stuff. Uh, how is our cons Oh wow, we're not even building. God dang it. Hmm. Agriculture, academic base, research. Industrial expertise. I like the bonus of G2 industry, so that's actually really nice. And a third research slot. Finally, 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 finally. Let's go some of that, too. Alright. The front restored. And then we get a new focus tree, which is good.
And make sure we put these divisions here too. At least we got a big old manpower boost. Cut, cut. Or spend cut, really. Awesome. Now, the new Soviet era. Western Russia has now been united by forces of our glorious shared army, dismantling warlordism and crushing the enemies of the Soviet people. With these conquests, the Rus West Russian Revolutionary Fronts gained much control of the new territory and now can truly claim to be a successor to the legacy of the old Union. This increase in our prestige and power means that it is high time we begin to determine the future political direction of the front, and usher in a great new Soviet era guided by Grand Marshal Georgi Zhukov. Under his strong and erstwhile leadership, the Soviet Union will rise once more. Very good. Restore VKP independence. Oh, crud. What is this? Elite voting. Restore administrative divisions. Maintain military precedence. Oh, boy. Let's go with this one first, at least. Before defeating the West Russian War, the front controlled great swaths of the territory across Western Russia. Come on. Uh, now the glorious Red Army has reclaimed much of its territory for us. As yet, as it stands, our presence in the region consists of little more than a military occupation, leaving the people without local government, in order to assert control of these areas and consolidate the front. It would be advisable for us to restore the old administrative divisions of the West Russian Revolutionary Front, reassuring the people that we have returned for good. Which is a good thing. Much like me drinking coffee right now, if you'd like to read about Kathleen Flo, please go right ahead. And we currently get 0.24 political power every single day. Wow, that sucks. A long, unfinished business, my friends. Zukov rarely broke his brandy collection out. The bottles were incredibly expensive, and while alcoholism was a, not a taboo in West Russia, deck in excess was very much was. Even so, as he stared at the map of the growing Union, he thought it was an excellent time to start. His armies ranged from what he had thought had been once their land. The Politburo reported cautious positivity regarding the integration of the old peoples into the administration, and the economy was booming, too. Bad word it, he whispered to himself. If you couldn't treat yourself at times like these, what good was hidden brandy at the first place? As he poured the sweet amber release into his cup, he buzzed his receptionist, tell Akromieva, Okremyev, Rezikov, and Yakolev to come in. Drinks, as they say, are served. He hoped that they bring in their own darn glasses this time. This stuff was a pain to wash out, even out of one of his cups. As the men saluted, Zukov waved them down, pouring the brandy into the proffered cups. Zukov raised his cup in a toast. Gentlemen, the situation has changed, probably for the better, but with all these complaints about farmers bad wording their own farming equipment on my desk, I don't have high hopes. You know, Grigory, Georgi, it would be best if you stuck to doing your actual job. They're hiring thinner comedians these days. The three shared a chuckle. They had always disagreed, but their shared sardonic misery kept them together. Well, we can't afford much small talk even now. I'm then thinking about the question of succession and grooming my future replacement. This labor seemed too much to last throughout another decade, I reckon. Zukov looked at each of them in turn. Akronyev's earnestness, Yakolov's charm, Rezokov's hidden depths. Each valuable in turn, but there could only be one choice and in the end. There's much work to be done. Alright, so the new Soviet state is largely apolitical and apathetic to what happens. So Akronyev, orthodox politicians, staunch Bukharinists, okay, war communism, but advocating defacing it out, okay. He wants to collaborate with the OFN. Uh, Rezikov, a pra ba pragmatic Leninist, supports phasing out war communism and believes in democratic elections. But Yakolev, the man closest to a capitalist in the WRF, supports limited privatization, privatization, freeing up in trade, halting war communism as soon as possible. Um, okay, black market available. Sports rivalry, if you want to read about that, please go ahead. This happens every time we reunify Western Russia, so at least it's better than shooting each other. Now, there's no one who's favored here yet. So... I guess I'll leave that option up to you guys. What should we do regarding this? Should we go with Akromeyev, Rezovskov, or Yakolev? And let me know in the comments below, because that's going to determine which way we go here. We're restoring the membership and or mil maintain military presence, as well as encourage state meritocracy, army professionalism goes up, as well as emphasize the par party's state or emphasize the people's role. So how do you do this one? Ah... So we have to do all of this stuff before we can keep going down here. So let me know in the comments below. Should we go with Ryskov, Yakolev, or Akromayev? But let's do at least a few more focuses. Over here, Red Proud Army, looking outwards. I get more political power, which I actually really want. The new economic policy is really good to go. An end to war communism. A measured transition. GDP growth will increase a little bit. I like that. The wealth of the motherland. Educating the people. Academic-based higher public education would not be bad. 
Uh, let's do the new economic policy first. The failures of war communism are manifest, while the armies are enriched and our people starve in the streets. While the state is blowing with economic planners trying to put out the fires, the sheer attrition of the art system starts new infernos all the time. While the country burns, in other words, only a few benefit, and that it is power, not prosperity, that the system creates. We will be hypocrites no longer. With a limited expansion of free market operations in our domains, our people, our markets will not suffer from chronic shortages, and our people will be freed from chronic want. It is a way forward for Russia, and so it will be our policy too. Cool. And actually, I'm going to double this. Go more, 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 And the tanks, well, we're going to get better tanks as well. 36, not enough. That's not bad. Actually, we could change those APCs eventually. 40 combat width, very nice. Change these to recon tanks, cool. We all have 9 army XP left. Burgundian bunkers, oh boy, what are they doing over there? I'm burgundy. Hopefully it's not anything bad. IFEs, I don't believe in IFEs. Oh, we need more APCs. Oh boy, we don't have anything working on APCs. Okay, that's not good. Alright. We need quite a bit more artillery, which is not bad. Uh, I can get that down a little bit more then. Yeah, APCs. You're at the bottom. You're not even getting anything yet, which really is not good. Okay, go back to one APC. New economic policy, very good. Reinstating the NEP. It's time to go back to the old days of the Soviet Union and Bukharin and re-implement one of the oldest ideas in the book, the new economic policy. While maybe going against our roots of total socialism, the same problem was apparently apparent 30 years ago and is solved by the new economic policy at least somewhat. Implementing a system of limited free markets still under the state control will be necessary if we want to build up this economy with West Russia. And in the nationalization of industry, while possibly hurting our productivity in the short term, will see us have long-term positive impacts and possibly even larger growth. It appears a mixed economy is the way forward now, and while we will continue to control what is necessary, private control will get a few things off our hands while we We've no need to control. Unnecessary sacrifice. And next, I'm going to immediately get more political power so we can improving, start improving ourselves. Uh, actually, maybe I'll wait. Let's do... Oh, poverty. Let's do wealth of uh, the motherland. Vast timber fields in every direction. Acres upon acres of farmland. Enormous wealth hidden just below the surface. The Rodina is vast and so are her resources. And the people of the Union shall use as many of these guests as they can to free themselves from Nazi menace and to return her land to the toilers that live off of it. Very good. Very, very good. Black market. I don't know why that keeps popping up. It's very weird. It seems to be very bugged now, but arrange agricultural mechanization. In many places, Russian farms are still worked by mules and horses hooked up to wooden plows. What modern agricultural practices that existed either never were implemented or discontinued due to a lack of equipment. That simply won't do at all. We will not suffer another hungry winter. Our farmers will have tractors, modern plows, and fertilizers to work besides them. We will see full storehouses and silos as an obvious result. more expertise and we're still not building because of our extension which I oh it's already 67 I want to do that but I won't really want your input first so not bad not bad increase agricultural subsidies we could do that one or we can reinstate Brodzelia hmm kind of go with that one though after this one executing uh, educating not executing but educating the people fund the sciences a generation of visionaries or a generation of workers Educating the people? Let's do that one. Public, edu public education drives everything. It hones the youth and prepares them for entry into the proletarian workforce of tomorrow. It pushes men and women, the brightest other generations, into the education where they can impart their learnings to do those who can carry the torch. And in doing so, it proves, improves the quality of our industry and research in all around public life. We must pivot to secondary and primary education, giving our people knowledge of more than the rifle and the farming tool, and give our country a future worth fighting for. Sounds good to me. Cut. Or spend and cut. Even though spending doesn't really do much, but it does, it does give us a little more political power, which is pretty good. Pretty darn good. Cool. Uh, poverty. Oh, military construction. Not bad. Lots and lots of, lots and lots and lots and lots of industry. Please, 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 please. It's already 67. Jeez. Um, are you guys all trained yet? No? Okay, we'll train. Marines need... Well, I guess we'll research some, some marine stuff, too. I'd like to throw on some main battle tanks for them, maybe. Even these guys. Template 8. Gonna rename that. There you go, that's easier to read. Cool. Educating the people. It's gonna cost us a little, a little bit more, but that's okay. Uh, research facilities would be nice, but whatever. And we'll do fun the sciences. The sciences are the key, not just to innovation in all fields of research. It is science that dictates how efficiently the tank or soldier moves and how much work can be done by a worker's brigade without stopping. It drives the tactics of our frontline troops and it ignites our ties with the outside world as the research community is linked with the cream of the crop, uh, cream of the global intellectual crop. If socialism is not driven by the people's science, why bother calling it the immortal science at all? For this reason and all others listed above, we will invest heavily into research and development and build a nation that looks ever into the future. Sounds like a good idea. 
And if you want to read about better agricultural methods, please go right ahead. But let's help us with the population. For the bread, we thank thee. Great. Even better consumer goods in which we might actually be able to build something then. And we'll probably go ahead and do looking outwards next. Cool. Same check for research. Good, good, good. Weekly map would not be bad, but we don't really need to do that. And looking outwards. With Russ, Russia under the Red Army's wardship once more, we have now re-entered the world stage as an actor among equals. So this comes with renowned, renewed attention from enemies and allies, both old and new. Consequentially, we invite unto ourselves great risks, great rewards, and even greater opportunities in equal measure. Savka will not dally in keeping away the first, inviting in the second, and seizing the third. We begin these three tasks by answering an age-old dilemma. Should the front restore to its old ties with the west sleeping giant, or should it forge its own path among our east fellow soldiers to the east? Good questions to ask. Which goes eyes to the west, which which will be influenced by our decision about which way we should go politically, of course. Ah, uh, let's get the research done then. First, not bad. Oh, the, oh, no wonder we didn't do great. We have basic artillery. Jeez, Louise. Actually, are we building anything with that boost? No, we're not. So holy crap! I uh, straight ahead. So then this dude against German giant. A nod to the empire, approach small socialist governments, international socialist solidarity, memories of fire, the Rykov Conference, send Yakov Love, meet in Washington, uh, establish a consulate, apply for OFNA, not bad, $400 million yearly should they accept, accept appeal for recognition, Western investments, not bad, tapping the market, not bad. But the proud Red Army. Many dismiss the Red Army as a failure. That is, it had dissolved after the German invasion. When we threw the Germans back from the AA line, the world was stunned, but dismissed us again afterwards. Now, we have restored the front and moved to take Russia once again. If the world doubts us, then they do so at their own peril. For we are men of iron, born to fight, survive, and never admit defeat. Our two options, my friends. Whether options decide it's time we choose, our diplomatic choice could very well determine the future of Russia. Our first option is to align with the OFN and America. While befriending America can come in handy with the wars against Germany and other Russian powers, it can very well show that we're betraying our very ideology. America could aid us economically and militarily, but a more socialist option is also apparent. Instead of aligning with the OFN, we could choose our own alliance, the SOC intern. But for any other socialist nations of the world could, would not betray our ideology. It could also be perfect for us on the world stage, displaying our strength in social solidarity. Unfortunately, no SOC intern could provide what the U.S. could and may very well weaken us in the long run. We must choose an approach, as diplomacy is necessary if we want any support at all in reuniting Russia. Do we choose America, sacrificing ideology for aid, or do we choose a SOC intern, and perhaps a so unite the socialist world, but also alienate the Americans? We must decide. That is... Very, very important to decide, and there's not much we can do here. I'll read one more focus before we end the episode, after we, of course, finish the red. Proud. Army. Uh, Army professionalism, probably most we want to do that one, do... Yeah, I'll do that one. High moral standards. Our forces are not a temporary militia gathered to ward off the bandits at harvest time. We aren't the bandits either, living by pillage and thievery, and we aren't some warlords hired thugs and murders. We are the Red Army, the ones who liberate the oppressed masses of the earth, and the only proper military Russia has around. So you act like it. Soldier. Act like it. And there goes Wales. Who would have seen that one going? Oh, yeah. Now, no wonder we weren't spending or doing anything. Cool. So we got all this done except for this one. Go and do that. And now cost is probably really high. But maybe we can actually build something from here or not. But we're up. Oh, yeah. We finally can. Look at that. And let's go ahead and select this one. High moral standards. The proud red army. The international blared as Grand Marshal Zukov looked out over the assembled soldiers. These proud sons of socialism faces beaming with triumph as they presented the flags to the front's defeated enemies hanging low beneath the vibrant red banners of the victorious revolution. The soldiers tossed the captured standards of the enemies of the Russian progress at the feet of the commanders as each set of flags hit the cold hard stone of Lenin Square. The marshal reflected on the reactionary regimes each of them represented. The Komi Republic, its divided multicolored flag, reflective of the deep divides that existed within the, that fractious bourgeois state. The black, gold, white, tricolor of the principal Poltiviak, a representative of a decrepit collection of the aristocrats so desperate to claw their way back to power, they assisted the German dogs in despoiling the very land they claimed paternal affection for. The lying banner of the Committee for the Liberation of the Peoples of Russia, many Russians were seduced by Slavosov's return to liberation, but behind that St. Andrew's Cross marched the jackboots of fascist subjugation. On the other hand, the mad jackals of the Aryan Brotherhood in their quest to purify the Russian nation bore the swastika with insane, shameless pride. As the parade marched on, Marshal Zhukov noticed that the proudest faces were those of the grizzled veterans, those who remembered the West Russian War. They remembered the triumph of Vol Volgograd. They remembered Moscow and Leningrad when the victory 
when final victory against the hated Germans seemed so close, only to be cruelly wrenched away by vile reactionary traitors. Now, the banners of those same traitors lay at their feet, and the revitalized Red Army stood poised across the Urals and reunite Russia once and for all. Zhukov knew that much work lay ahead of him, but today he allowed himself to bask in the warm glow of victory. Krasnaya Armia Vesia Selny. But I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. Let me know in the comments who we should choose to shall lead the West Russian Revolutionary Front once Zhukov is gone. And I'll see you tomorrow with an answer. Thanks a lot for watching, and have a great rest of your day.